understood. May thy joy fill our days. Oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. The time has come for us to see that there's but one reality upon the earth and high above the truth that all was made from love a love that calls to us to fly above the hills above the sky above the storms above the pain a land where peace and laughter Thy joy fill our days. Oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. Guide all our hopes and all our dreams, past every glow that only sees into the light, the inner sun. Into the truth that we're all one. Help us to find in every hour, in every thought, in every flower, a joy that spans eternity, the truth that makes us ever joy fill our days. Oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our ways. The time has come for us to see that there's but one reality upon the earth. storms above the pain, a land where peace and laughter reign. Oh, Master, may thy joy fill our days. Oh, Master, may thy wisdom guide our to find in every hour, in every thought, in every flower, a joy that spans eternity, the truth that makes us ever free. Please.
From the depths of slumber as I ascend The spiral stairway of wakefulness I will whisper, whisper the food and when I break my fast of nightly separation from thee I will taste thee and mentally say God 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 no matter where the spotlight of my mind will ever keep turning on thee and in the battle din of activity my silent war cry will be God, God, God When boisterous storms of trials shriek And when worries howl at me I will drown their noises Loudly chanting God, God, God When my mind weaves dreams, dreams With threads of memories On that magic cloth will I emboss God, God, God Every night in time of deepest sleep When my peace dreams and calls Joy, joy My joy comes singing evermore God, God, God In waking, eating, working, dreaming, sleeping, serving, meditating, chanting, divinely loving, my soul will constantly hum, unheard by any feet of thy guru, think in thy heart, lotus feet of thy guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, shame in the white lotus in purity, shame in the white lotus in purity, beyond all duality, Guru image.
Church of Bram deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Bram deliver us from delusion. Think in thy heart, lotus feet of thy Guru. Think feet of thy guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, shame in the white lotus in purity, shame in the white lotus in purity, Beyond all duality, Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Think in thy heart, lotus feet of thy. feet of thy guru. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, if you want to cross the ocean of delusion, shame in the white lotus in purity, shame in the white lotus in purity, Beyond all duality, Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Think in thy heart, lotus feet of thy. the ocean of delusion. If you want to cross the ocean of delusion, shame in the white lotus in purity, shame in the white lotus in purity, beyond all duality, Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Thinking. Thank you all for coming this evening, and thanks also to those of you who are joining us online. Isn't it nice to come together to honor Master? It's our whole life, really, is 
it, it would be nothing for, for us, for devotees, would be nothing without him and the sacrifice, in a sense, sac you can't call it sacrifice, but from our viewpoint, it's a sacrifice to come into a world of maya and delusion and all for the sake, out of love and compassion, knowing what we are going through and will be going through. But it's such a beautiful life. You know, the sense that we all have, and Master affirmed this also, is that this line of gurus reincarnates repeatedly at inflection points in world history at the time of the Bhagavad Gita, at the time of the establishment of a new world government uh, with uh, William and England. And now, of course, at the time, the inflection point that is most pertinent to us is the beginning of Dwapara Yuga. And so Master was born a little over uh, Quarter, a century and a quarter ago. He came to this country just over a hundred years ago. And he came primarily in order to help turn the consciousness of the world toward God. Those were perfect um, chants and songs that were chosen. The, the song, God, 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 the spotlight, no matter where I go, the spotlight of my mind will ever keep turning toward thee, toward God, God, God. That is the essence of his message. And the essence of his message to us as individuals, it was the essence of his message to the whole world, who at the time was even less tended to turn the spotlight of their mind toward God. You know, it's remarkably similar. The time that Master came to America as it is now. Think of it. It had just been finished a world war and a pandemic. And he came to America. America was going into what we call the Roaring Twenties not exactly the most sattvic period in the country's history. The Great Depression, the worst economic times that the world has experienced in recent history was just a few years ahead, and then another world war. But at the time, the problems of the world seemed strong, they seemed overwhelming, they seemed like you had to work on them, you had to pay attention to them, you had to fight against them, racial prejudice, and you could make a laundry list of the problems. And what was his response to all of that? It wasn't that he denied that those problems existed. Of course he knew they existed. But what was his response? What is the way out of the problems? May the spotlight of my mind ever keep turning toward God alone. God, God, God. And we now are faced with that same dilemma. There are compelling problems in the world. The world as we know it, as we have known it for, take, go back a, um, less than a decade, from that time on, the world is beginning to shatter. It's beginning to fracture. And we see it in this country, but we see it all over the world, all over the world. And so that fracturing and the problems that are coming up, they seem compelling. They seem like we've got to forget about this religion and spirituality nonsense and get down to some practical solutions. And all that does is it takes us farther into problem consciousness, farther into fracturing, and farther into delusion. And Master came, this whole line of gurus came 
in order to counteract that tendency so that they came in order to bring the consciousness of the world to turn it back toward God. Now, the ship of the world is an awfully big ship, and it is hard to turn very much. To make even a little course correction is as much as even a great line of masters like this can do. So, yes, they came in order to initiate, in order to bring us into Dwapara Yuga consciousness. And if you think about it, Master in 1920, in this world, 1920 and 1930 and 1940, he was able to do a certain amount. But because he did what he did at that time, the world has begun to shift already. And now in 2020 and 2022, the world is already beginning to move in that direction. And Master's teachings are more pertinent today than they were a century ago. And they're more useful today because we're open to them. The world is more open to them. But it's not really our job to worry about the world because we can only really affect our own lives and those of the people who are around us. We, we can't really affect what the government of Iran or Afghanistan or wherever is going to do, or this country really, but we can affect what we're going to do. And so we, as devotees of Master, need to pay attention. If we want to honor him, we're going to watch a beautiful slideshow of him in a little while to tune in to him. And it's best to tune into the consciousness of his eyes because he has a beautiful face. He has, I mean, as Gyanamata said, how many incarnations did it take to sculpt such a face, as a, such a spiritual face as Master had? But that's the outside. Well, our job is to tune into the inside, tune into what Master's consciousness was. We can get a glimpse of that, looking at his eyes especially, and at his expression. But where we're really going to connect with Master is what they chanted, the guru image of Brahma in our hearts, that image of God that has produced, incarnated as our master. And for you and me to tune in to that aspect of master, his consciousness, his teachings, that's how we can honor him. It's not enough to say, oh, you're beautiful master. Oh, your writings are lovely master. Oh, and then go about our business. We need to not look at master. We need to try to become master. We need to try to be what he came in order to model for us. And as I say, the world only wants a little bit. I was thinking of the image of a pyramid. You know, a pyramid has the sides that slope up. Well, at the base, let's call that to wor the world, the two outer blocks are pointed in an upward direction. All the rest are not. All the rest are just blocks. And so it's like that. The world has a tiny little bit of direction toward God, but the rest is just random stuff, stuff that they're going through and dealing. You get up midway, there's a whole lot whole lot fewer, just call all those blocks in between the ones that are pointed toward the apex. All of those are just distractions. You get up midway and there are very 
a, a lot fewer distractions. Well, you and I are up at the top layers. Maybe not at the very top where everything is pointed toward God, or maybe we are. But that's our job, is to get our whole consciousness pointed toward God. But even the next layer, two blocks, they're both pointed at the edges toward God. Not very much distraction there. And so what Master came to do, and this is how we honor him, is to point our consciousness, the needle of our consciousness, ever more completely toward God. And I would say that one of our challenges in this year ahead, where the world is fracturing around us and there's so much tension and contention in the world, one of our jobs is not to allow all of that stuff to derail us. Let's at least for this community, at least for the deep disciples of Master, let's keep our consciousness ever pointed toward God, ever pointed toward Master. It's not that we need to live in ignorance, but we don't need to live in a constant reactionary state either. And the way out of the problems, the, the solution Master, brought exactly the solution for the times that we find ourselves in. He brought the solution for January 2022. His teachings were made for this year, sculpted for it. And it's our job to honor him by living those teachings and by keeping our minds ever more directed toward him alone, or toward God alone. And if we can do that, not only will we have the direction that we need toward our own happiness, toward our own, everything else is gonna to lead to worry and conflict and confusion, or as it says in the festival, to pain and suffering. We don't need to pay that coin. Our coin is calm acceptance and joy. Let's this year live in calm acceptance and joy. Calm acceptance of other people and joy in the variety of the world. Calm acceptance of what goes on and joy in the fact that behind all outward things is God alone. It's his drama, it's his dream. And he's wanting to dream it in this way. And what we want to do is we want at least to get to that upward momentum of awakening from this dream. And that upward momentum is, as Swami told us, the whole of the spiritual path is to dissolve the ego. And that's done by longer, deeper meditations, and by seeing God as the doer in everything. God is the actor in all this bizarre drama that is going on right now. So let's live in calm acceptance and enjoy the show to a certain extent, but the real joy lies within. The real joy lies in deep inner communion with Master, inner discipleship to master and modeling our life down to the tiniest detail after him. And he will respond if we open our hearts to him like that. We've mentioned before, but we had a wonderful reading from a reader, a naughty reader, like Book of Bragu, and he said, you have given your life to a great master, and he, this is really for all of us, we have given our lives to a great master. And reading from ancient Sanskrit on, uh, you know, I don't know whether it was papyrus or what the leaf was, but it was very old in any case, reading that. And he said, and your master, Yogananda, named him, 
is looking after you minute by minute and second by second. So Master is looking after all of us, all of us who have given our hearts to him and are doing our best to following him. He is looking after us minute by minute and second by second. And no greater gift can be given than love of that sort. And so tonight, especially on his birthday, let's return his love with our love. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. I'll also share just a few words, and then we'll see the beautiful slideshow of Master. In one of Swamiji's talks on discipleship, he makes a beautiful distinction about two ways to approach the guru-disciple relationship. One is the word, the word disciple, which is, comes from the root discipline. And then in India, they use the word chela, which means child. And both of these are important. And we have to incorporate both of these approaches, both of these Bob's feelings in as we try to attune to our great master. First, there's the aspect of discipline and obedience. And the disciple says, yes, I will do this. I will do whatever you want. I will. It's our goal. There's always the resistance, but on some level. But just that the disciple and discipline, it's formal. It's almost military, one might say. I will do this. This is what I'm being asked to do, and of course I will do it. I will be obedient. Yes, sir. But then there's the child and the um, obedient, disciplined child. Those of you who have children or have worked with children, the obedient, disciplined child is so dear to the parent because it's not like you have to say, now you have to do this, now you have to do that. The obedient, disciplined child wants to please the parent, wants to please the mother. And as chelas of this great master, we should naturally want to please him. Not, yes, sir, but just whatever makes you happy. That's what I want to do. I don't care if whatever it means to me, it doesn't matter. I, whatever the cost, I don't care. And I remember so often with Swamiji, because he was basically gentle with us in how he dealt with us. He very rarely corrected, and only in extreme need. But we just, we, we wanted to please him. We were his children. I remember Jyotish and I have a grown son, but when our son was well, maybe eight years old or so, he, welcome, he, um, he said, our son said to us, watching our lives and our discipleship to Swami, he grew up with that, knowing that that came first in our life. And one time he asked us, why do you always do everything Swami asks? And we said, because he's our very best friend. We love him. And our eight-year-old boy said, I guess I don't love anybody that much yet. <laughs> and that was very insightful on his part, because you don't at first. But then the child loves the guru and just wants to please him. And then there's the use of will and willingness. You know. Uh, Ganamata, the last word is the willing hands, the willing feet, and we need to be willing because we're going to be asked to do a lot of things we just don't want to do. Being a disciple is not convenient most of the time. <laughs> but we have to say, yes, sir, yes, say yes and make it snappy. That's the disciple, that's the discipline. 
And we, we have to have that. We have to train ourselves because when that ask comes, whatever it is, we have to just turn off that part of the mind that says, it's not convenient, I don't want to, I have a better, I'd rather do it my way, blah, blah, blah. We have to say yes. But the child, the willing child, and doesn't think about, there just isn't resistance. And I remember so often with Swamiji, I mean, sometimes we would literally stay up all night working on a project. And we wouldn't say, oh God, this is hard. We wouldn't even think about it. It just would, it was fun. It, whatever, he, because we, there was that flow of energy that we tuned into. And, and, and I really want to encourage you all in whatever you do. I mean, yes, we don't have master in the body. Yes, we don't have Swamiji in the body. But we have a hundred things every day that we're asked to do. And get your will going, but then just be in a flow and enjoy it. I, I have to say, and I, I, I so enjoy watching some of the monks on uh, property services, especially during the very hot, dry times where they were just out there weeding. You know, it was so hot out and they, you know, had the big face mask on and long shirt. And they were just out there with their weed eater cutting. And I just was inspired every time I drove by them. Just that flow of energy. Whatever you, whatever is asked of me, I'm not, there needs to be the part that recognizes the sacrifice, but then the part that forgets the self altogether and just does it does it with joy. And then there's listening. Listening to the guru. And so often, too often, people say to us, well, Master told me to do this, and Master told me to do that. And in my heart, I think, I'm not so sure <laughs> if that's Master or just your own subconscious mind telling you what to do. But to really listen and be open. And if something, calm, calm acceptance, listening with an open heart, what is it that you want of me? And the disciple, the discipline, again, you know, they listen and they do, but then there's the subtler attunement that if in meditation, and over time you come to recognize this, it's sort of, it's an interesting experience because God comes, as Christ says, like a thief in the night. And so rarely does God guide us by letters and golden light in the sky or, you know, some big boom or, you know, it's just this little subtle movement of energy that you begin to recognize, this is what I'm supposed to do. And just that with that, openness and willingness and softness and, and desire to just not to feel the, so any separation at all. And finally, with attunement, again, both are needed. We need to be the soldier and we need to be the child. And the soldier, heroic, noble, but the child is closer to the guru in truth because there isn't any sense of a separation. There's just a oneness. So we've been given the blessing of this great guru. And I want all of you to really appreciate the fact you know, you read, Swami gave many talks on discipleship. Master gave the number of talk He talked about discipleship, of course. But by the time you're really a sincere disciple, as reflected by living in an Ananda community or being part of an Ananda center, you need to understand, as Jyotish was saying about the pyramid, it's just close to the top. Our, at this point in our incarnation, 
we need to realize and take seriously the opportunity before us. Because we can get out in this lifetime. We can find God in this lifetime. We have all the tools. We have the environment. We have the satsang. We have the support. We have everything. But we have to really see what we've been given and what we've earned. You have earned the right to be here. Don't underestimate yourself. You have earned the right to find God in this lifetime. Take it seriously. Do your best. And I think we have come to create model communities, yes. But what makes them a model community? Perfect roads, perfect water systems, with all respect to Rama. Um, we have very nice systems. But that's not what makes a model community. What makes a model spiritual community is that every person is trying to model themselves after their guru. And we all do it differently, but in a sense, we all do it the same. I see the same light of God wherever I go in this community, in an office, in a market, in a garden, in the fields, the same light of God. And so in offering our lives, with more, we'll do the attunement, excuse me, the discipleship ceremony at the end after we see the images of Master. But as you look at Master's picture, I ask you to inwardly make that connection and say, in this lifetime, I will find God. God bless you.
with the strings of my perpetual goodwill before the altar fire of God's omnipresent light. I unite your souls forever and forever in Christ, in the spirit of the masters of India and my Guru Preceptor. Om. Amen. Om. That we may all realize we are now God's children and we shall ever be afterwards. And may you remember this. If the Western brothers only could learn the methods of the yogis, then they would learn to live hundred years in perfect health, happiness, and great success. You people do not sleep correctly and allow your sleep to be disturbed by the mental movies of dreams. You subconsciously worry about unpaid bills and troubles Now I will go into the state of superconscious bliss by lifting my eyes higher in our relaxation and controlling my heartbeat.
We'll close now with the discipleship initiation and we'll ask you to stand, please. And um, also remind you that thanks to uh, Surya and Nanda Devi organizing, we have a beautiful little gift for you. You can get it on your way out by the door. It's a bookmark with the discipleship vow on it, so you can take it home with you. And um, generally, when we do the discipleship initiation, the individual comes up and offers a flower. Well, we won't do that this evening, but I ask you just to, I'll hold up this beautiful rose and fill it with your love of God and Guru. And on behalf of all of you, I'll offer it to Master. So the first part of the initiation, I'll read it, and you just follow mentally. And then the second part, you repeat. Uh, and Jyotish will read that part. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Teshwar, Paramahansa Yogananda, I bow to you all. Divine Mother, I come before thee today, having long sought thy eternal light, long pondered the eternal truths, long followed the winding path that leads to thee. I have walked with my own strength, all too seldom with thine. I have walked with the thought, I want this from life, these answers, that guidance, this pathway or that. But I have seen, as often as I made claims on life, it eluded me. As often as I presumed on thy will, it turned away from me. Ah, too long, mother, have I sought thee for myself, not for thy love. I know now that without thy strength added to mine, infusing it, I shall never find thee. Thine is the power, the grace, the infinite glory, with loving faith now I seek thee, through the ray of thy light thou hast offered me. I will ascend to thee, not by my power alone, but by the power of thy infinite love. I am thine, Mother, be thou eternally mine. And you can uh, softly repeat these words. I offer myself in service and devotion to your cause. And to the ray of the divine light, as it is represented by your channels. Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar and Paramahansa Yogananda. Accept me into this family of self-realization and make me also, through them, an instrument of thy blessings. Thus, as I receive, May others be blessed also to receive. I will join my energies to those of my guru bhais, 
my spiritual family on earth. I will cooperate with them, and especially with the living representatives and guides of my line of gurus. Discipline me, guide me, purify me, teach me to attune myself to thy ray until at last, through daily meditation, service and devotion, I, re I unite my soul with thy infinite spirit. and internalize these words. And then let's chant Om, vibrating them into the aura and to the living presence of Master. with the prayer now. And if you'd like to stay and meditate, please feel free to do so. So let's leave quietly, leave the temple in silence, and pick up your bookmark gift on your way out. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Great Masters, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Teswarji, Beloved Guru, Paramahansa Yogananda, Saints of all religions, humbly we bow to you all. O Beloved Master, we come, we come as thy children with open hearts, with a desire to please thee. With the desire to please thee. Guide our steps, Guide our steps. Though, we stumble. though we stumble. Lead us always, Lead us always. To, our true home. to our true home with thee in God. With thee in God. Om. Om. Peace. Peace. May Master bless you all.